Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode we've got some more fox in action and some stalking in sunny Scotland. And a bit later on we're joined by a very special guest on the air gun show. But first we join Mark Ripley as he heads out to his local chicken farm hoping to get down the fox numbers for their protection. Tonight I'm out with my regular foxing setup, and I'm out after a fox that's been taking some chickens from the farmhouse. Now uh, the gear that I like to use and what I've got with me this evening is my uh, good old trusted 223. This is a custom rifle. Um, it's based on a Ticker T3 action. I've also got a Infrared V2. This is a TH50 version 2. Really, really nice thermal scope. I tell you what, this scope is, uh, in my mind, I think that is the best thermal scope on the market. Um, I don't think anything comes close to that. I love it, that's what I use all the time. I've also got the Pulsar Mergers, nice little set of spotters, these. Uh, so I'll be using these this evening. Got a rangefinder built in, which is one of the main features that I like about them. And as always, I've got the recon tripod with me, which I find very useful when standing around foxing or taking longer shots. So this farm's usually very productive farm, there's usually quite a lot on it. I'm hoping we're gonna see something on it this evening. Um, the farmer told me all the fields have been cut. Well, I think that was partly true. All the fields have been cut in some places, <laughs> but the whole fields haven't been cut, as you can see. He's uh, just cut the, um, the, the boundaries of all the, all the fields here. So uh, that might work for us, but we'll have to wait and see. So it's just about to get dark. We've probably got another half hour to an hour left of light. So I'm going to stand around and uh, see what comes through. So I've set myself up on the edge of this field. Now where I'm set up, I can see the hedge that runs along the bottom of the field, just in front of me, it's not more than probably uh, have a look, about 80 metres to where the foxes generally kind of cut through. There's a tall tree here where they tend to cut through into this field and then normally head straight up towards the farm. Um, but hopefully, if one does come out, I'll hopefully get a chance to stop it on that clear bit before it goes into the long grass in the middle of the field and there's also a field next to us here which has been cut and I can see quite a bit of that so if nothing else it might give me an early warning of a fox coming across that field through the ditch and into this one. So typically, right on cue, I was actually just filming a little bit through the camera and a fox just walked out there and he came out exactly what I thought it would by that tree. Um, and he did exactly what I thought he would do. He's gone straight into the long grass and he's probably going to make his way up to the top of the field there. But I think I'm going to wait here anyway, uh, just in the hope that maybe he'll come back out of the bottom here or possibly down right on this corner. Um, I haven't got much of an opportunity for a shot at the top there so what I'll do is I'll wait here and if I do see him come out the long grass at the top then I might be able to catch him up and get, get him on the field above. I'll wait and see. You know, so I've got my hood up. That's not just for camouflage, but uh, that's mainly because the mosquitoes, they're all over the place tonight. It's one of them typically hot summer evenings that's just prone for them. I've already squashed two on my hand that were like the size of a bloody sparrow. Hey! Hey! Well 
that's one down. Right folks, he was in the next field, was just mooching around in that field. Uh, he was just uh, he was about 110 yards. And um, yeah, I just saw him. He was just snooping about and zoom scoping a little bit. Knocked him over, straight down. First fox in the bag. So as you see on the infrared V2 here, you get a picture in picture mode option as well if you want it. So that's quite handy because if you're taking a long shot, you can zoom right in and you've already got 14 times magnification and you don't lose much clarity on that either as you can see. It doesn't go all pixelated like other thermal scopes. And um, that's not even really focused properly at that distance. But uh, that top window there, that gives you double the main image. So in other words, if you, zero, you zoom in on 14 times on the main screen there, then the picture-in-picture -picture mode is uh, 28 times. Really lets you precisely aim on your, on your target there. Ignore the diagonal lines going up and down across the screen there. That's um, just a, a film in the digital screen issue. But yeah, as you can see, it gives you a really nice, really nice picture. Very sharp. You can probably hear on the camera the blackbirds doing that ping, 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 ping kind of noise. Typical alarm call of a blackbird. And um, it could be the sign there's another fox about. That just goes to show I must be pretty well hidden. That fox just came out the hedge that I'm stood against and he was about, he'd probably come through about 30 yards up the hedge, came out the hedge and then started to walk straight down towards me and he came to within about 17 metres before he suddenly thought, mm, something doesn't look quite right there and went back the way he came and back through the hedge. He may well circle around and perhaps come along the bottom of the field. He's probably still going to want to go in that direction. We'll see. <laughs> Certainly a busy area for foxes this farm. In fact, one night on a previous ep episode of the uh, shooting show, I actually shot 16 or 17 on here one night on my own, just walking around with the 223 and night vision. Right, well I'm getting eaten alive here by these mozzies, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little walk down across the fields here. I've just spotted another fox right down the bottom there, a couple of fields away. Probably won't catch up with it, but I'm going to head down that way anyway, have a look, see if it's still hanging around. But, um, yeah, at least if I can keep out the biting distance, these mozzies will be worth a walk, if nothing else. Or at least I'll make them work for their dinner anyway. <laughs> So that fox is in that bit of cover there, just calling. Spook the cattle a little bit and the cattle are like working their way down this way. So I'll just be quick if I'm going to get a shot. I can 
can't see him at the minute, but he's just sat there. And I've got like the tops of this hedge in front of me, the new shoots from this hedge in front. And it's just obscuring it. I need him to either. I think what I'll do is I'll move a little bit further down and see if I can get a clearer shot. Excellent, that's two down. That one was about, uh, turn that off, he was about 135 metres, so that made him about 145 yards, something like that. And he, the cattle had spooked him, the cattle started coming through those reeds there, and um, he, uh, he moved off, he moved off back across the field, he was going to do a runner, and he stopped and just gave me a perfect broadside shot. And yeah, I just held nice and steady, recon sticks, and um, he's gone over lovely. But I'm gonna keep my eyes out because he was calling. He was calling and there was another fox nearby answering. Okay, I can see that fox moving around in that backfield. It looks like he's moving this way and there's a gateway into that next field just in front of me, probably only about 100, 150 yards in front. So I'll wait here, and any luck, he might come through that gateway. Another one down. <laughs> I think that was the one that I could hear calling back to this one, first one, or second one, I should say. And um, I saw it briefly in the field behind, and I lost sight of it. I thought it was going to come through the gateway in front of here, but it must have gone through the bushes a bit further up because I saw it next coming across the field I'm in, up right up the top. Um, but I couldn't get a shot there because there's some buildings and that behind so I gave it a squeak and it came in just just nice just kept giving it a little mouth squeaks just little gentle squeaks and it kept coming in and then uh, it started to get a bit suspicious and it could see me or it could see me silhouetted probably against the sky and um, it started to work round which was perfect that's exactly where I wanted it because coming around this way gave me a nice safe shot so as it came round, I just waited until I had a nice opportunity and um, he sat down and uh, gave me perfect front on chest shot. So, and he was probably about 60 metres, and not very far at all. So, three down, so happy with that.
Right, well, uh, that's a um, little barren vixen, this one. And made quite a mess of it. Little 223, close range. Anyway, that's one of them. So we'll walk around the other side here and uh, see if we can find the one that's in the reeds there. And then um, if we can get past the cattle, we'll get down and uh, see if we can find the other one as well. First one shot. So uh, this one's fox number two. This was the one that was at 130 yards or 140 yards, whatever it was. Nice little dog fox. So and yep, yeah, as you can see, nicely placed there. So in for ATH50 and uh, the recon bipod there, or tripod there, I should say doing the business. And that's the fox that uh, was uh, the first one shot. You can see it's got quite a number on it. I think they're a little bit high actually. That's a big old fox that one. And that is... That's a vixen by the looks of it. That's a vixen. Well, I just came back to where I'd left the first fox with the other two that I just traipsed all over these fields to go and pick up. And um, just as I came back into this, this first field here, I saw what I thought was a fox at first, um, right over in the far corner. And I gave it a squeak and that, and tried to pull it in, and I realised it was just a rabbit. But as I've been squeaking for a 30 seconds or so, I just pan round with a the thermal, and um, there was a fox at the top of the field. And he was just stood up there just looking round. So I just gave it a couple more squeaks because I didn't have a safe shot where he was. I need to bring him right in to be able to uh, have some ground behind him for a shot. And as it happens, I managed to squeak him right into under 20 metres. I think he was 16 metres or something. And uh, he didn't have a clue I was there. Probably would have walked right up to me, which is the beauty of thermal scope and thermal spotting gear. Anyway, he came straight up and um, I just gave him a, a little click of the tongue or something I think and he just stopped and looked and uh, obviously it was a piece of cake of a shot but um, yeah it does just go to show the benefits of thermal. Anyway that's four foxes down for the evening and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching and please do subscribe. Up next, we're back out with Chris Dalton in Ayrshire. Some recent coppicing work has made sure that the local wildlife is booming and also gives a great chance for his favourite animal to stalk, the roebuck. With the weather really decent, he's hoping for an early summer stalk. So let's see how he gets on in this next clip.
Yeah, this week we're uh, on home turf in the southwest of Scotland in probably what is a, one of my favourite times of year actually. Um, we're into kind of late spring, early summer. Uh, on the row books, they're just starting to get territorial, so we're seeing quite a lot of a lot of activity now, where the younger books are getting a bit of a hard time off the older books, and you, actually uh, that's worked in our favour on on this morning's stoke. Really, early morning we're out. You know, we're, it's light at twenty past four. Nobody's about. Great time of year. I've never minded getting up early, and uh, bluebells are still flowering. Seasonally, we're a little bit later than normal. I would say we're two or three weeks behind because it's been it really cold. I mean, it was cold right through spring and into summer. Nights even now, um, and they're still we're still getting temperatures around sort of five or six degrees, and the wind changed uh, northerly, so that's that's kept the temperature down. Nice bit of breeze, breeze to work with this morning, and quite a lot of deer moving. The piece of ground in question is, is bought by a friend of mine about 18 months ago, or slightly longer than that now, and he's done an awful lot of work on here. Nothing had been done. It was an old sort of castle, quite derelict. Uh, the land hadn't been touched. And he's done an awful lot of work clearing out the rhododendrons in the, in the hardwoods, the native woodland, taking out some of the trees to thin and coppicing some of the, willis, uh, some of the willows. Uh, and it's actually turned it into quite a staggering piece of ground. It's amazing how opening it up has transformed the land. It absolutely oozes road here. It's just got everything for them. Beautiful, beautiful situation. And opening up a lot of areas that were previously impenetrable um, has made me realise there are probably slightly more road here on there than I'd originally thought. So clearly I'm under remit for a balanced population to start to reduce numbers. Uh, to that end, I'm, I'm really concentrating on the younger, the younger uh, row. Um, we've got some very nice, what I would put animals in the one to to two-year-old class. Uh, I want to sort of concentrate on those. Some very nice animals on there which I'll try to leave but even some of the mature stuff I'm going to have to shoot. So this morning what's particularly targeting was that kind of mid-range buck. Um, bucks if you were a little bit thin on the ground you'd probably leave to mature and develop because they will make good animals but if you know you've got to, you've got to balance your population so so that was the kind of plan for this morning's stalk. Got him. 
came from there. It's a mature daughter. It's a really good book. That would be relatively easy now for me to just crawl forward and get onto the bank in front and shoot that from here. It's about 160 yards shot from there. But I'm really not interested in shooting that deer. That's a good book. I want to leave him on here for a good couple of years yet. Spread his genes while I'm looking for the youngsters. I just love Robux stuff yeah. this time of year. I mean, the scene is, it's just oozes deer. Beautiful bluebells, we've got the sun coming up. Um, absolutely superb setting. And what we've got, um, a little row book, a uh, little six point book, he's only a youngster. And there was a big book over to our left, which we saw earlier on, and you could possibly pick it up. There was a little bit of barking going on. He was clearly stopping out of the way. He was skulking around under the willow trees at the edge of this little coppice here. Um, and I could watch him and he, I couldn't, couldn't get a shot at him. Um, and the bigger buck was sort of doing his stuff and he, the odd bark over there, territorially marking, etc. And he kind of skulked around the edge, but I was pretty sure he was going to come on. He was curious, but, but wary, and he was pretty sure he was going to come on this bank. So we managed to get set up uh, across on a, a mound, probably about 140 yard shot, just, just over there. And he, he just worked up nicely. I mean, it's, it gave us a perfect opportunity for. A, the shot, but you can just see now, I just want to point out, it's just changing into into summer coat now. The youngsters are, are, are changing, so they look quite raggy. 
I mean, it's just the effect of the of the of the old winter coat, the longer coat coming out, and now you've got this lovely fox red starting to come on underneath. It tends to start around the neck area, around the groin uh, first, but lovely condition, nice little roebuck, beautiful, beautiful. Almost a shame to shoot. I, I love these animals. Almost a shame to shoot them, but we have to do it. We'll probably take three, maybe four young bucks off. It's not a massive piece, uh, and one or two of the bigger lads need to go just to get to, to get the balance right. But this is exactly, I mean, he's a, a deer I would, if, if I didn't need to take any Robux, he's one I would leave. I mean, he's gonna make a, he make a lovely book. Um, absolutely beautiful, beautiful condition. Shot placement, as you could see, was, was just sort of front shoulder. There is a, I'll just walk you over to this because the massive, massive blood loss. You can see some arterial, um, bright sort of lung blood there and, and, and and, and he's got a little speck and then he's gone straight over and, and bled out. But as I said, Josh has shifted about half of that. The shot sight was, was from the banking, uh, well up the banking, just across the way there. And I'm going to growl him on this very conveniently positioned hawthorn tree. So I think that's probably what I would say a beautiful morning. It's an absolute privilege to be out in countryside like this on a morning like this. I mean, this is Scotland at its best and it's... 90% of the year it's like this here, so you don't know what you're missing out on. Super stalking there from Chris, and now for the air gunning show. We're joined by Matt Manning. He's back on the air gun show to test out some of the new optics from Hick Micro. With him getting used to the new kit, he's after some rats, and let's see how he gets on. Right, well you've just seen me rat shooting with the Hick Micro Alpex. Now it's a brilliant digital day and night scope at a sensible price. And I've been using it loads lately, so I want to tell you a bit more about it and also the equally impressive and slightly more compact Hick Micro Cheetah LRF. Um, there are just some great deals to be had on both of them at the moment, so let's kick off with the Alpex. The first very obvious thing about this optic is that it's proportioned very much like a conventional telescopic sight. Um, it weighs, the basic unit weighs about a kilo and it's around 440 millimetres long. Now, most significantly though, it has a 30 millimetre tube and that means that you can drop it straight into normal scope mounts. Now, I really like that because it means that I can mount it really nice and low and that reduces the amount of holdover that I have to use when I'm shooting over close ranges. This optic gives pin sharp viewing with 3.5 to 14 times magnification. Now you zoom in and out using the dial on the left hand turret and focusing is via the front collar. Now even with the compact supplied illuminator which is power adjustable and focusable 
you get really crisp night vision viewing and a detection range of out to 600 meters. Now in day mode, you get a really detailed full color image and that color viewing is maintained even in poor light conditions at dusk. The Alpex is packed with features yet is very simple to operate. Uh, the rear right button on the ocular bell switches between day and night modes and also turns on and off the picture in picture function. The button on the left captures still images or video with audio direct to the onboard 64 gig memory. Now that recording function couldn't be easier to use and it's what I've used to capture the through the scope footage that you can see here. A detailed menu is accessed by pressing and holding the left turret. Now you then turn the dial on that turret to scroll through the various menus and make a short press on the turret to make your choices. Now features include connectivity to the Hick Micro Sight app, uh, one shot zeroing, the ability to save different zero profiles for different guns or different shooting scenarios, um, plus numerous design and colour options for your reticles and much, much more. I demand a lot from my night vision kit and in the year or so that I've been using the Hick Micro Alpex, it has never let me down. Now one of its strongest points from my perspective is its long runtime. You can get well over 10 hours from its rechargeable onboard battery and you can further boost that by dropping a CR123A battery into the housing below the top turret. You get a lot of extras with the Alpex package. Now it comes supplied with a hard case and strap, USB lead, the IR illuminator, uh, plus an angle adjustable quick release mount, plus rechargeable batteries and a charger to keep the illuminator powered up. Now, that package retails for a very competitive £799, but you can also receive a further discount and get it for £749 with any gun purchased from your local gun shop. Now, furthermore, the Alpex is also available for just £699 without the accessories. Right, let's move on to the Cheetah. So, the Cheetah LRF is a more recent addition to my rifle scope lineup and it's already given a very good account of itself. Now, as you can see, it's a more compact option. It's about 180 millimeters long and it weighs around 580 grams with the eyepiece attached. The real standout feature on this model is its laser rangefinder, and that's evident by the LRF in its name. So if you press the middle button on the left and hold the cursor over your target, it gives you accurate range readings from 10 to 1,000 meters. Now, I absolutely love this feature, and it makes such a difference when it comes to applying precise hold over and hold under to your shots. Digital zoom gives you a magnification range from 2.7 to 22 times and you wind that up and down using the dial around the rear button. Now another really clever thing with the Cheetah is that it's got its own onboard infrared illuminator which gives you a nice crisp image in complete darkness. Uh, it detection range slightly shorter than the Alpex at 400 meters, but it lends itself brilliantly to air gun shooting. And like the Alpex, it also produces a really detailed, very sharp, full color image by day and in twilight. Runtime is around five hours and can be extended by using the power saving standby mode. Now this feature is also present on the Alpex and it basically sends the unit to sleep with one quick press on the power button and another quick press kicks it immediately back into life. Now the Cheetah comes supplied with two rechargeable batteries and a charger and those batteries can quickly be swapped out in the field. 
The Cheetah shares a lot of the Alpex's useful features, including direct video recording at the press of a button, which is really useful for shooters who want to capture and share the action from their outings. Now, it also has a stack of other features, including site app connectivity, smart IR, picture in picture, one shot zeroing, multiple zero profiles, plus a wide choice of reticle colors and designs, uh, and loads more. Now, what you do is press and hold the rear button to open the menu. You then turn the dial around it to scroll up and down and then make short presses to make your choices. The LRF model of the Cheetah Rifle Scope retails for £849. Or if you buy it with any new gun from your local gun shop, there is a further discount, taking it down to £779, which is remarkable value. Now, the Cheetah comes supplied with the accessories that I've already mentioned, plus a hard case with carry strap and a Picatinny mount for rock solid attachment to your gun. The Alpex and the Cheetah LRF are both excellent digital day and night scopes from Hick Micro. Now, I've tried not to get too bogged down in the technical side of things here, but you can easily find all their technical specifications on the Hick Micro website. Now, both of these units are really solidly built and despite being packed with some very sophisticated technology, are extremely simple to operate. Don't just take my word for it though, do try to get your hands on them and take a look for yourself. Great to see Matt back in action there, but sadly that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of The Shooting Show. Make sure you like and subscribe for more videos, and if you're not a member of Basque, now's the time to join. My name's Chris Castle and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.